on the X11 side, you could replace Kaven with a tiling window manager and turn KDE into a tiling environment. On the Wayland side, you've always had to rely on extensions. Before there was Polonium, there was Bismuth. Before there was Bismuth, there was Cronkite. Now, Cronkite is very heavily inspired by DWM. If you've used DWM before, you'd very quickly notice that. But sadly, Cronkite was long abandoned before the Plasma 6 era, and is just not going to work on a modern version of Plasma. Whilst it was abandoned, it was not forgotten, because an absolute legend said, hey, why don't I just fork the project and make it work on modern versions of Plasma? Also, it is available on the KDE add-on store. And here it is in all its glory. Now, if you watch my Polonium video, you might notice my borders look a little bit different. Thank you to that person in the previous video who pointed out decorations called classy. These look much, much nicer than the basic breeze decorations. They're incredibly customizable. If you don't like the icons used in this, you can use the breeze icons instead. But this is now what I'm going to recommend if you want to have colored borders on your windows. Also, if you're like me and plan to test out both Cronkite and Polonium, Keep in mind that a lot of the hotkeys they have are shared between them. So whichever one you install second, because Plasma does not support doubled up bindings, even if they are from extensions and might not be enabled at the same time, uh, all of those duplicates are going to be deleted, so it's very likely you will have to go and rebind the extensions if you swap between them. I would recommend just watching the videos and seeing which one you like more, and then choose from there. Just for context, this is what my hotkeys look like, but because yours may not end up being the same, I'm not going to focus on what they are bound to, instead I'm going to talk about what they are doing. Now the best place to start is with the layouts. It should be noted that not all of the layouts are enabled by default. If we go into our Cronkite settings and then go to the layout section, the ones that have ticks next to them, those are currently enabled. I don't really understand why it wouldn't enable all of them by default, so you can easily cycle through them and easily test them, but it is what it is. The only one I don't have enabled is the floating layout, because this is literally just what Plasma does out of the box. So go ahead and enable them. Also, when you make any changes to the settings, if you want to have them applied, go and disable Cronkite, and then re-enable them. You don't have to restart Plasma. Now, the default layout and the one we're currently using is called Tile. More specifically, Tile 1. If you've used DWM, Awesome, most other tilers, you'd know this as the Master Stack layout. Now, the 1 indicates the number of master nodes, so of course, there is a binding to go and increase that. You can increase it to as many as you want, you can just have it all basically as a master node if that's what you want to do. Now, there is also the option to rotate the layout as well. Now, rotate doesn't work on every single one of the layouts. It does work on this one, and it does work on the other master stack sort of layouts. If you try to run the rotate command and it doesn't rotate, then rotate doesn't work. And whilst you can move the windows around like you can on all of the other layouts, on the master stack layouts, there is also a command to specifically replace the current master node, which, depending on what you're doing, might actually be incredibly useful. As you may have spotted before, there are quite a number of layouts. When we swap the layout, it is going to tell us the one we are currently on in the center of the screen. Now we are on the monocle layout. In monocle, it only shows a single window at a time, and the way we get to the next one is by changing our current window focus. Personally, I don't really use monocle layouts that much, but I know some people are a really big fan. The next one is the three column layout. This is our other master stack kind of layout. If we make a new window, it's going to place it off to the sides. If we go and increase the number of master nodes, now it gets added into the center, and now we have two nodes considered the master. Obviously, this is way too many windows on the screen. It is just here to demonstrate what is going on. Now, our next one, this is the spread layout. This is a very interesting layout I don't really see on that many tilers. The window that currently has focus is the one that is going to be on the top. And the windows are laid out as if you have a bunch of pieces of paper on a desk. 
This, I could imagine being pretty useful, especially if you do like having a bunch of windows open. Also, if we go and click between them, it is going to go and change to that window. Do note that as we do that, it isn't going to reorder the windows in the layout. The order of the windows is the order they are laid out on the screen. If you want to go and rearrange them, take this one here. Let's open B top. We can go and shift it around the stack with the same bindings we would use if we we're moving it in the other layouts. And the next layout is the stair layout, which is basically the same thing as spread, but this time it is done vertically instead of horizontally. Nothing else changed between them. Next is the spiral layout. And uh, I have too many windows open to properly demonstrate it. Let's close them. And as I make them, I think it's going to be a very clear what it is doing. It's going to spiral the windows in what is often referred to as the golden ratio. Do keep in mind, this is a very strict golden ratio. It doesn't matter which window you're currently focused on, it is always going to be added into that spiral. Next is the quarter layout, which does exactly what you'd expect. Like the spiral, this is a very strict quarter. If we make a new window, it's not going to be added to the layout, it is automatically floating. No matter how many windows you try to add, it is never going to go above four. So if you want to make sure you're always using quarters, this is probably the best implementation I've ever seen of it. Next is the stacked layout, which is very self-explanatory. The windows are stacked on top of each other. This is one of the ones you can rotate though. And our last one is B tree. Nothing looks like it's changed here. The best way to demonstrate this is just to spawn windows. I don't really know how to explain it otherwise. One thing I should note is with any of the layouts, if you rotate them, the rotation is going to be monitor independent. So if I rotate this screen, it isn't going to rotate anything on my secondary screen. This is really nice because I like having them rotated on my vertical monitor because master stack doesn't necessarily work exactly the same on that screen and ends up having windows be very, very squished by default. If I rotate it so the master is on the top or the bottom, the layout works considerably better. Now, any of you tiling fans probably noticed that one very popular layout is clearly missing. Let's go back to the spiral because the spiral is usually what this layout would be. Usually spiral means it is going to split off the current window and then begin spiraling from there. Because this is a very strict spiral though, there is no way to split this window here, which is very annoying because that's the layout that I typically like to run. Whilst I do like having these layouts, and if you are from DWM, it's going to be very familiar, I like having a more free-flowing tiling style where you can just split things as you want to split them, but you don't have the annoyance of doing I3 where you have to manually decide the split. So I like the splits being automatically done, but automatically done based on where I currently am. Another thing about the layouts is you can change the default, but not in the way that you would think. So <laughs> you can't technically change the default. What you can do is change the current layout that are enabled. The only way to stop tile being the default is by disabling tile and now monocle is the default. If you disable monocle, now three column is the default. You can't rearrange these and you can't set a specific one to be the default. So if you want to use multiple layouts and the one that is at the top of the list isn't your default, you're going to have to cycle through it every time you want to use that layout. Also, a really big one for me, each of your monitors and each of your virtual desktops and each of your activities have their own layout selection. So you can have a different layout on one monitor and then on a second monitor. This is very, very nice, again, if you have a vertical display and some of the layouts don't play nicely on a vertical display. 
or even if you're not doing that and you just like having choice, you just like having customization, thank you. This is awesome. Okay, whilst I've mentioned you can change focus and you can change windows, when I was on Polonium, there were a lot of issues with doing so. And I am very happy to say those don't exist here at all. Moving windows, let's uh, put a thing here so you can tell the difference. Moving windows feels perfect. Absolutely perfect. Changing focus feels perfect. And you might notice, as I'm moving the window around, I'm not touching my mouse. And do you see something crazy happening? The window isn't losing focus. I can keep moving it around. And if I touch my mouse, that's when focus changes. So it was just a Polonium issue. It wasn't an issue with Kwin whatsoever. It was just an issue with, I don't know, whatever Polonium was doing to handle moving the windows around. And look at this crazy concept. I can drag a window with my mouse and I can consistently change where it's going to be located. There has been a slight issue where if you drop it between a window, sometimes it will start to float. I haven't seen a Tyler do that before, but that seems like a very minor issue as opposed to the core behavior simply not working. Now, there is another way to go floating. So if we drag this window and instead of letting go of the mouse click, we instead let go of meta, now it is going to automatically start floating. When you let go of the mouse, then it is going to readjust the layout to make sure things are where they should be. So you can even drag a window out of a layout. You can rearrange windows with a mouse and you can drag it out of a layout. Like, what? Like, <laughs> basic tiling behavior is working. Also, you may have noticed me using it, but there is a binding to go and bring a window in and out of floating if you want to do that as well. I like to use this quite often. I like having my notes generally as a floating window. Now, like with Polonium, you can go and resize the window by dragging the window edges. Sometimes this does cause a bit of an issue with the window gaps. Usually, it readjusts properly a moment later. Just keep in mind that it might not always be perfect. The better way to resize is by using the resize bindings, which again, work exactly like they should. This is a very consistent theme. Things are just working like I would expect them to. Do you know what also works consistently? Maximize and full screen. There's no the window getting big and suddenly shrinking back. No, no. It just works like I would expect it to. I don't know how Polonium broke this. Now you may have spotted this issue earlier, but there are certainly issues. A lot of those are with windows that have very set minimum sizes. This settings window will not get any smaller. So when it is spawned, it might break the layout and you have to go and resize windows around it before the layout actually starts fitting together. And in some cases, it might not actually be possible to fit the window. There we go. Okay. And if you go too big again, it just starts to overlap it. In the cases of windows like that, sometimes it is just better to float them. I don't have giant gaps enabled, but I do like having window gaps. And I don't understand why, but Cronkite doesn't enable gaps by default, which honestly just feels like a bad way to show it off. Everybody likes gaps. So the way we go and enable those is going into the geometry section and there are two different settings for gaps. We have screen gaps and gaps between tiles. So gaps between tiles is specifically only these gaps in between the tiles. There isn't going to be any doubling up of gaps. So if you have a window along the side, it's not gonna say five plus five in my context, it is only going to use specifically the screen gap pixels. This is to make sure you don't have doubling up and don't have to do just stupid math to make sure things look how they should. Whilst I have complained about some of the default settings, especially the layout stuff, I do think some of the defaults are perfectly fine. Under the option section, we have keep floating windows above tiled windows. So 
if we make this window here floating, it is always going to appear above these windows. And even if we click one of these windows back here, it is never going to go behind them. I have lost floating windows many times and had to like delete things and try to find them because it didn't have that enabled on other tilers. So that's very nice. Always preserve the tiling status of a window upon dragging. So if you move the window, it's going to go back into the tiling layout and prevent windows from protruding from its screen. So if you have a window where, let's say it's resized like this, there is a context where, as we can see, it's not getting any smaller, where some tilers would just start moving it over to the other side. That setting stops that from happening. Now, I'm kind of mixed on the setting, but some people do like to have maximized the sole window. So if we go and apply that, disable Cronkite, and then re-enable Cronkite. If I spawn a window over here, because it's the only window on that desktop, it's automatically going to be maximized. If I make another one, now it goes into the tiling layout. The only reason I don't like this is sometimes I think a window is full screened or is maximized. I make another window on that desktop and then suddenly it's not. This can be annoying when watching videos and things like that. So generally I avoid that setting. I know some people do really like it though. Now I can't say for sure, but it seems like that issue I had on Polonium where random stutters were reintroduced doesn't seem to be here. So it very well might actually be an issue with Polonium. That being said, during the testing for this video, I did have one hard crash of Plasma where it dropped me back to the TTY. So if you had a display manager installed, it would have dropped you back to the display manager. I also had a soft crash where my desktop blacked out and then everything came back. The rest of Plasma didn't die. My windows didn't die in that case. But the first case, I lost everything. Luckily, I had uh, saved my notes and didn't have to redo all of them. But this isn't perfectly stable. There are some cases where it can crash. I'm not 100% certain on the situation that caused it, though. But even with those issues, in the current state, Cronkite is so much better than Polonium. And if you want to use tiling on Plasma, honestly, I think Cronkite is the best you're going to get. I would like there to be splitting based on the window location. If that was there and those crashes weren't present, this would be the way I would use KDE any time I used it going forward. But what do you think? Have you used Cronkite back in the day? Have you used the version on Plasma 6? And maybe you've tried out Bismuth and know what that was like. I keep hearing that Bismuth was the best. But because of the way it worked, that's never going to be coming back. It was too reliant on the old systems. So Cronkite and Polonium are what you get now. But let me know your thoughts down below. So if you liked the video, go like the video. And if you really liked the video and you want to become one over these amazing people over here, check out the Patreon, Scribes, and Uberpay linked in the description down below. That's going to be it for me. And I'm sure there's going to be people saying... Oh, but tilers are bad. Just use a tiler if you want KDE to be tiling. Why are you trying to turn KDE into a tiler? Why don't you like me having fun?